Hey, good morning, YouTube. It's Richie from Boston, and today's the 19th of June, 2016. In my last several videos, I've featured a lot of things about martial law and my thoughts on it. I don't base this on my own personal opinion. This is the opinion of veterans, oath keepers, and others that have served this country and people I stay in contact with, including ex-law enforcement. It's coming. The time for petitions, the times for voting, all that stuff is out the window. I've placed a PayPal donate button in the description box because I was talking to B. Rich last night on his show and I'm going to be going to the DNC with him in Philadelphia and it's going to cost money to get there. If you want to help me out, just click the button and donate what you can. CEO Ben Smith is with me now and Ben, good day to you. You were quite vocal on Sunday, you got a lot of attention for um, what appeared to be a short but very succinct speech at the World War II Memorial. You said something to our producers a bit earlier today. You think the government is trying to provoke the veterans to do something. What do you mean by that? Within, within the people who see things wrong here, who are looking at the uh, shutdown, this, is, this can be absolutely planned, and it's a conversation topic. They want us to do something. They either want to diminish our voice or our significance or draw contact and they can crush us. I mean, you've got Sheila Jackson Lee, who is calling for martial law to end the shutdown. I mean, that's, that's insane. That's getting rid of the Constitution of the United States, which is also what every service member has signed up to and including their life for, to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States against enemies, both foreign and domestic. So. We've got a government here that seems to be wanting to create the conditions that they want to take our Second Amendment. You know, they're, they're going for the Second Amendment. They're trying to take guns from the veterans uh, with PTSD and all those types of things. Um, voting rights. Um, in the past elections, there was a lot of problems with the veterans in voting, getting the ballots back from overseas. And they want to discredit the military and get us to do something stupid so they can lock us down, get rid of, you know, you can call it a conservative Tea Party movement. It's more people who believe in the foundations of this country are the people that they're poking at, which are the citizens of this country. Well, and that's what, what, the what, people in the government. Uh, make sense of this. Um, we're looking at the World War II Memorial there in Washington. I mean, it's essentially a sidewalk that comes off the mall. Why would the government... Mm -hmm. Put up barricades, pay people, spend the money so that they could install barricades to keep people out. What, what, why would that happen? <laughs> well, there's such political dissension in the, in the country. They're thumbing their noses at each other. And the thing is, the American citizen and the American service member are now the battlefield they're trying to fight over us or to get votes and it's become a political war game it's like a cold civil war out there for which way the country wants to go and the right isn't the right anymore there's no real american real political figures who believe in the constitution and you know i could name a few of them who i would kind of trust on the hill. It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh. Executive Order 10990 allows the government to take over all modes of transportation and control of all highways and seaports. Executive Order 10995 allows the government to seize and control the communication media. Executive Order 10997 allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Executive Order 10998 allows the government to seize all means of transportation, including personal cars, trucks, or vehicles of any kind, and total control over highways, seaports, and waterways. Executive Order 10999 allows the government to take over all food resources and farms. Executive Order 11000 
allows the government to mobilize civilians into work brigades under government supervision. Executive Order 11001 allows the government to take over all health, education, and welfare functions. Executive Order 11002 designates the Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons. Executive Order 11003 allows the government to take over all airports and aircraft, including commercial aircraft. Executive Order 11004 allows a housing and finance authority to relocate communities, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. Order 11005 allows the government to take over railroads, inland waterways, and public storage facilities. Executive Order 11051 specifies the responsibility of the Office of Emergency Planning and gives authorization to put all executive orders into effect in times of increased international tensions and economic or financial crisis. Executive Order 11310 grants authority to the Department of Justice to enforce the plan set out in executive orders to institute industrial support, to establish judicial and legislative liaison, to control all aliens, to operate penal and correctional institutions, and to advise and assist the President. Executive Order 11049 assigns emergency preparedness function to federal department and agencies, consolidating 21 operative executive orders issued over a 15-year period. Executive Order 11921 allows the Federal Emergency Preparedness Agency to develop plans to establish control over the mechanisms of production and distribution of energy sources, wages, salaries, credit, and the flow of money in U.S. financial institution in any undefined national emergency. It also provides that when a state of emergency is declared by the President, Congress cannot review the action for six months. The Federal Emergency Management Agency has broad powers in every aspect of the nation. General Frank Salzito, Chief of FEMA's Civil Security Division, stated in a 1983 conference that he saw FEMA's role as a new frontier in the protection of individual and governmental leaders from assassination and of civil and military installations from sabotage and or attack, as well as prevention of dissident groups from gaining access to U.S. opinion or a global audience in times of crisis. FEMA's powers were consolidated by President Carter to incorporate the National Security Act 1947 that allows for strategic relocation of industries, services, government, and other essential economic activities and to rationalize the requirements for manpower, resources, and production facilities. The 1950 Defense Production Act gives the President sweeping powers over all aspects of the economy. The Act of August 29, 1916 authorizes the security of the Army in time of war to take possession of any transportation system from transporting troops, material, or any other purpose related to the emergency. The International Emergency Economic Powers Act enables the president to seize the property of a foreign country or national. These powers were transferred to FEMA in a sweeping consolidation in 1979. The betting of the president continues as we bring you another edition of The Real Obama. Now, in this installment, we shine a spotlight on an executive order that the White House was hoping that you would never learn about. Now, the president signed the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order late Friday afternoon. And since that time, now the measure has been virtually ignored by the mainstream media. Now, the order essentially gives the president of the United States absolute power over any and all American resources during both times of peace and national crisis. Now, this includes but is not limited to food and livestock, water, plants, energy, health resources resources, transportation, and construction materials, and gives the government the ability to, quote, control the general distribution of any material, including applicable services in the civilian market. Now, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney laughed off a question about the document at today's briefing. Let's take a look. There's been some online commentary suggesting this gives the executive branch power to allocate energy, food, water in either peacetime or wartime. And there are some conservative blogs that are pushing the notion that this suggests the White House is preparing for war with Iran. Can you explain what this executive order was? <laughs> well, I cannot explain that reaction to it. I think it was a fairly uh, 
standard and routine uh, piece of business. Now, not everybody's laughing about this executive order. In fact, some have suggested this would give the president of the United States the authority to declare basically martial law during times of peace. And to be sure, this is simply the latest string of actions taken by the administration that ignore the basic principles of our Constitution. Join me. Now, I know everyone's going to say, well, this stuff is old. Well, it's it's old, but it's in place. And the fact that the latest mass shooting was such a farce and Vice President Joe Biden showing up with the petition from all the gun anti-gun people means they're getting ready. The fence is up. All they need to do is lock the gate. I'm Richie from Boston and I'm out.